You're listening to the Low Pressure Podcast, the podcast for skiers. Presented by CMH Heli Skiing and Peak Performance. This episode of the LPP is brought to you by CMH Heli Skiing, Peak Performance Outerwear, Fat Tire Amber Ale, RMU Skis and Mountain Culture Shops, and the official destination partner of the LPP, Kicking Horse Mountain Resort in beautiful Golden British Columbia. Enjoy the episode. <laughs> the bonus episode. Yeah, right? But yeah, kick, S- kick it off. Bonus episode. S- all right, here we go. Super, <laughs> yeah, we super go. bonus episode. So we just... <laughs> Boom, crack the beers. Yes, you may... Okay, yes. So you may have heard uh, the episode that we just did on Thursday with Sammy and Yu Sasaki. We're My chilling. Boy. We're chilling here at Sammy's house. And uh, we did that full yeah. episode, which is a long one, because we were getting along so well. And Sammy's like, dude, let's just keep going. And I'm fucking down oh, with no, that. No, that's not what happened. All right, so, okay, <laughs> we were, here's, here's what's happened. I'll, yeah. I won't throw it in the bus. So I was like, hey, Sammy, let's, and Sammy's like, hey, let's do a podcast. I'm like, absolutely. I'm like, I'm going to do one with you as well. Yeah. And then, um, like we covered in the last episode, we we're like, "Hey, how's use English?" I was asking some friends. And I was like, "It's good." And you're like, you, it's, "You can do one, yeah." Yeah, you're. It's good. I'm like, "Cool." And he's like, <laughs> "Thank you." And then yeah, you were like, "Hey," he's like, "I'll hang out. I'll, if you're gonna do one with you, I'll hang out just to like you know see if he needs help and I can." You it's know, not if, what happened. No, okay. Well, he, <laughs> right. He's like, use my boy. So he's like, "Yo, you wanna? Can you, you, come you explain over? it. You explain. Yeah, you come over and." Uh, <laughs> And uh, help kind of monitor and make sure everything goes good here. And I was like, you don't need me. But, no, um, no, 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 no. I need got you. it. I need you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. We're going to yeah, just keep talking the shit here. A little bonus episode, Abs- I guess. Yeah, so absolutely. Man, I'm stoked to be here yeah, at your place. Yeah, like we, we covered it at your place before. Cheer. Good to have you, boys. Thank Today you. was good on the hill. Day oh, one. Yeah, that was fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was so busy. It was the busiest I've ever seen. It was busy, yeah, hard day. Yeah. It's hard to that. Tough, you, know, yeah. you know, I thought Revelstoke was was empty and no one was going to be here, and it just got shrouded in five minutes. Don't yeah. come here. Go back to Whistler. Social media. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Yeah. Happens, dude. <laughs> it always happens. Yeah. Did you? Where did you guys ride today? Uh, we were riding groomers. Me. No, yeah, mostly groom. Yeah, because snow is still thin. Lots of tree. Oh and yeah. Logs. Yeah. Where, yeah. What's the um, the stoke chair? We were going up the stoke chair and about like three quarters of the way up the stoke chair there was like I thought it was like a stump. It was just this big massive rock in the middle of the, yeah. of yeah. the, yeah. of the thing. Yeah. I'm like what is that? He's like it's a rock. Yeah. I'm like what are you talking about? Everything else is just perfectly smooth. Yeah I think yeah. I did more dad turns today than I have like the last two winters combined. Just like oh, man. just noodling around out there. And right? you guys it's know the mountain cool. too right? Like so I was a little bit. Uh, I do like two runs up there, pretty much. Right. Everyone's got there. Like you talk to JJ, he's like, "Have you been over here to Donkey Kong or Bonanza? Or like, did you go over and hit this round?" Like, dude, Jalapeno. I went left off the lift <laughs> and I rode here, and then I go right and I ride there. Yeah. Yeah. But now I don't tell people that though, because I have these little stashes. Right. right. I want to ski with you up there. I ski with you, but and uh, I'm not too many other. I ski with JJ today. Like I don't. I've only skied here. I've never skied. Well, I've skied here a handful of times. No, he, but he but knows. not enough but not enough to know exactly where yeah. I'm going. Jay's been living here for for since like 2000 and uh, I don't know how long. he told me today, but I forgot. Long like many now. years. Yeah, old, no, for sure. yeah. he knows the mountain. Yeah, right. And he patrolled sure. here yeah. for a while yeah. too, yeah, he and he's like that. like an ambassador. Yeah, and like just they're the greatest hosts. I've been staying with them. Well, uh, I usually do. Just pop yeah. in. Yeah. Sometimes when I'm driving through town, I'll pull yeah. in and we'll go walk the dogs. I'll have a like a non-alcoholic beer. I'll sit for a drink and chill for an hour. We'll walk the dogs and have them visit, and then I'll keep driving to Calgary or Revelstoke yeah. or something. Mm. But I was gonna crash at Super their. Good, I was gonna crash at their place. Yeah. Uh, should I tell? Talk about my the truck that I crashed. Talk, I, yeah, I haven't dude, told that story. We yet. had car accidents the same night. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Must, you got to let it out. It's such a pain in the ass. I have this truck that I've had for years. It's well, just, no, I, I like saw Mark the other night. He was all excited to come to town, and I went up the, in the bar. I was like, Mark, are you crying? Crying? Like, why are you crying? I'm not crying. <laughs> come on, man. No, I, that's good. He's like, why is your face like like that? Um, no, so like this truck I've had for years has been kind of a, it's, it's gotten me to where I need to be. It's kind of a piece of shit. Yeah. Um, I put a new transmission in it in December and I was like, do I get a new truck? Do I not get a new truck? 
do I spend this yeah. money on it that or, or do I, expensive or do I buy DCI, something right? new or like but used cars are so expensive right now that it yeah. almost wasn't worth it so I'm like fine I'm just gonna pay for this and then like two weeks two months ago yeah. I broke a leaf spring on the truck and I went to do I went to actually Eric and uh, Logan Piotta's uh, and Eric Piotta's place mm-hmm. up in Pemby his dad's a mechanic uh, kind of. He's like rally. They have like like a full shop in there. Oh, they build that, they okay. build their jet boats Shit. and they wow. work on all their sleds mm-hmm. and stuff. And like his dad has uh, like rally cars, like full like stock rally car. Yeah. And um and they have like a full lift and everything. So I'm there doing this episode with with him and his dad, which is super cool. And like when I first rolled up, I'm like I was hearing this clunking noise, and I got underneath the truck, and like the leaf spring, one of them had snapped. And it was at, and it was out and, then, yeah. and it was leaning up. It was like pushing up against like one of the brake lines. I'm like, this is not good. But no better place to figure out that there's something wrong with my truck than where I was. Yeah. So we did the episodes, and then Logan and, and his dad were like, I oh, just throw some zip ties and some wire on it. So Logan got under and helped me fix it up, and I limped it home. Mm. So I'm like, fuck, I gotta get these new like leaf springs. So that cost me like sixteen hundred bucks. So I'm like, close to eight grand in the last year so i'm like yeah. fine this truck is finally like every six months i gotta fix something like youtube is great for learning oh, how yeah. to do that shit yeah. Yeah. Been, yeah. Yeah. The youtube university man but still i'm like <laughs> it's a love-hate relationship with this truck because it gets me to where i am you know big for the back seat for the dog i can yeah. push it in the back and yeah. carry my sled so i'm driving out here making great time you know i'm not rushing but i'm just you know cruising feeling good about myself i'm starting out a two-week trip yeah. gonna go to revy meet up with you guys yeah. for this podcast hang out at jj and kimmy's place yeah. the sister summit just get, came out so i went and did a couple episodes with them yeah. opening day then i was gonna go maybe pop into yeah winter's here yeah, yeah. pop into banff because i never skied there and like cmh is there they're a great sponsor of mine yeah. and then my brother lives in calgary with nice. uh, my two nieces so yeah. They live on a lake. I brought my ice skates. I was going to go skate, <laughs> skate with the kids and hang out with the girls. And then make my way back to Golden for their opening weekend, which is next weekend. Okay. So two days ago, rolling into town. I'm about 15 minutes down the street. Yeah. Perfectly straight section of road. Like yeah. perfectly straight. Driving like this. All of a sudden, it's like I hit marbles, black mm-hmm. ice. And the truck just goes boom and starts Ooh, to spin. I've had that happen yeah. before. It's so freaky. Like, yeah. I don't, like we're going with the rate of traffic. wasn't going too fast. So we just start doing this. And I kind of correct it to bring it back. Yeah. And I'm in the oncoming traffic lane. Yeah. So I'm like, no, I'm like, no, fuck, I'm so lucky. So I'm just thinking of the, I just went, nope, nope. And I cranked the wheel, tried to correct, but... I think may I don't think it may have been because of the leaf springs were so taut and there wasn't yeah. enough weight in the back that yeah. it just the, the it just felt like it was on on like ice skates like it was crazy so I so, so I was like I'm getting out of this lane so I pointed it over and it kind of pushed back towards just recorrected and it just went right off the side of the bank about 15 you launched launched yeah you yeah. saw that photo how far yeah. back yeah. the road that was road. crazy yeah. <laughs> so, so I, yeah, I was not expecting you to be that far no so it hit, <laughs> so i went down it went down it Boy, hit <laughs> um it hit yeah. i saw cedar fly from the back seat and in, in wow. into the front seat and i was like oh no like my pit and my like i was fine yeah but i was like he, i'm under i'm under control seat belts on and i saw yeah. cedar and i fucking panicked a little bit she then so it hit and then it bounced in like 180 and it was facing the opposite wow. way like down the bank so lucky missed a tree no flips though no yeah no so missed it lucky. missed the trees missed everything there was snow on the ground like best yeah. case scenario yeah, that's hell we got a photo zoom you can just put it up on the camera Should yeah i can off the yeah, road you <laughs> yeah i can like i'll probably add it in like a okay, like nice. the mailing yeah. like a mailing yeah. list or something like that next year you're gonna have your Rick and someone on the side, you know, just no. yeah. Rogan style. I hope so. Yeah, exactly. Screen. That's the plan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Talk We're, to Peak, dude. Tell him, come We're, on, let's go. Working on it, working Come on. on. So yeah, I'll put the I'll put a <laughs> photo of that. budget. <laughs> let's go. Um, and then uh, so yeah, we I was in the sitting there for a moment. I'm like, okay, no, I'm fine. I'm like, Cedar. So she's just like, what the fuck was that? So she jumps back in the back seat, but the everything like flew off everything that wasn't like like the the consoles and stuff flew off bags and stuff i got hit in the face with something pretty hard yeah so then i just went like okay i'm fine the truck isn't gonna explode there's no water no there's no i should have so i'm like all right what's so i just calm 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 myself i was pretty calm she was like panting and kind of shaking so i just sat in the back seat for a minute yeah gave her a little hug calmed her down and then 
I was like, okay, now what do I got to do? I called 911, put on my ski gear, some because it was like minus 20 something. Yeah. So I just layered up. And then there was a dude, like, I guess that worked for the road, saw my tracks, had just rolled up. And he was there like within the five thing, minutes. Eh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. His name's Dan. Yeah, I worked for MCON. I went and dropped some beer off for him. So he, he came down and he's like, you're good. I'm like, I'm good. And we were talk, talking about it. And he's like, you want help hauling your shit up to the road? So start carrying stuff up the road. I called JJ. He's like, oh, no. So he came over. Oh, so nice. the time I went off the road, by the time I had finished with the cop and I was at JJ's house, it was an hour and a half. That's crazy. So and then, how long until you got to the bar? Like two minutes? Two yeah, we, yeah <laughs> we, we, we sat and kind of chilled for a little bit. He made some dinner. And then yeah. like, I don't drink caffeine ever. Okay. But I had like a, a, a big tea on the drive in and I oh, was yeah. like, oh, I had a guru. Yeah. So I was like wired with the caffeine. So like yeah. all the shock and adrenaline was wearing off and the Ooh. caffeine was wearing off. Yeah. And I was, I felt so awful. I'm like, dude, I don't know. I'm like, let's just go. I'll pop in. And, it's, and that was a good distraction just to kind yeah, of see everybody. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And I was like, oh, what happened? And like, oh, where are you from? I'm like, oh, here. Like, well, how's your day? I'm like, want to hear about it? I just like launched my truck off the side of the highway. Yeah. So it's toast. So yeah, now I'm kind of damn. figuring out what to do. But, do I? Yeah, but damn, I'm, you got so lucky. Though. Super lucky. Yeah, you're like yeah. way off the road. I was telling yeah. someone. I think so I was telling you. I think I've got like four lives left. Yeah, I can yeah, count. I that. Like yeah. I can count. Yeah. Like it's it's not cool, but I got lucky a few times. Mm. And I don't know. My but my dad was like, man. So my dad. I don't know if I don't know if you need to believe in the secret. You know, when you put stuff out into the universe and you have these thoughts and the, yeah. you attract law of attraction no, sort of thing. For sure, definitely believe in that. So I've been thinking about you know maybe I want a new truck soon one of these days. And my dad was like, you know, if I won the lottery, I'd buy you a new truck. He told me that last week. So I don't know if we've been putting it out there. And then yeah. this was the way in order to move that forward process, but uh, that process forward without really making any serious like <laughs> consequences yeah, yeah. <laughs> so i don't know yeah long, good thing cedar's not here no that's yeah. that's the most important part so then we we were like the dude came and helped us and then she after like a few minutes yeah. was like kind of sketched out freaked out and then yeah. at one point he went to go say hi to her and he patted her on the head and she went boom and got full zoomies and started ripping around the snow <laughs> around the truck. Like, all right, she's cool. She's good. Yeah. We're good. We're good. So, so then, got cold, had no worries. So I'm like, I told you, I'm like, oh, I did this. And you're like, I had a deer tonight. Yeah. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like what I know you, that story. Like, what are you talking about, I man? I tell you this? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Same thing. Like what? Probably two hours before you. Right. I was cruising back. Yeah. Middle of nowhere and um, no service right on time. So I was just cruising, really enjoying, like, beautiful, peaceful night. Didn't have my seatbelt on. Stupid. I know you should always have your seatbelt on, but I was just like, I should put my seatbelt on. And decided not to. It's like, ah, oh, it's perfect. Nobody's going to be on this road. I'm going slow. <laughs> cruising. <laughs> Whatever. Should have put my seatbelt on. I know. <laughs> but then out of nowhere, a deer just came sprinting down, like, a 15, 20-foot bank. Just, like, it almost seemed like something, like, thinking back on. I was just, like, so gaped at how this gear just deer just jumped in front of my truck. But it just came, like, sprinting full speed down the bank. No hesitation into the road and like once before i had an elk jump in front of my truck and i swerved and i had a camper in the back and it was like to the point where i could feel my truck like almost tilting go. over yeah, yeah so i told myself like yo if that ever happens again go right through it you just gotta hold the course and go through it did, did you like and duck i didn't i just well the deer was luckily it was a it was a kind of like a mid-sized smaller deer um but yeah i tried to fade left over to oncoming traffic because no one was coming and there probably hadn't been a car like five or ten minutes right. on either side of me. That's why I was so confused. Like, why then? Right. But the deer just came sprinting through, and that so I tried to fade left to like give him, give him a, a little bit of like yeah like space space, and it yeah. just kind Did of you hesitated. Honk your horn? Um, I didn't even have time. It was so oh. fast, just like ran down. So I, wow, and, yeah, and I like <laughs> boom deer right into the center of my of the grill, and I just as soon as I hit it, just like in my heart, yeah, I was like, oh, I like the bad. poor deer. <laughs> You did know, the, the air, did your airbags, my airbags go off? My airbags didn't go off. I didn't even think of that. That's like the first thing Vince asked me, but thank God they didn't. Um, I was able to stop pretty quick. I wasn't going that fast, luckily, like for my truck because it didn't get too banged up. Blew the grill off, but like as soon as I hit, I was just thinking of the deer, like looked in the rear view, saw the yeah. deer kind of, yeah, like get up and fall over. And then um, 
Because it was, yeah, obviously it was not doing good. It was in pain and it was yeah. like, it's messed up. Yeah. Was it in the ditch or was it, it on the road It was in the still? ditch, yeah, it made it into the ditch. And so I was like trying to just like let it get comfortable around me so I could get closer to it. And then I was just going to, yeah, like it did not want me to get anywhere near it. So as I started getting closer to it, it like kind of scooted off into the bush. Right. So I had to, unfortunately, yeah, nature had to run its course there. But yeah, that was a pretty shitty experience, but definitely a good reminder. Like now I'm definitely put a little brush guard on the yeah big big brush guard yeah. you got it kind of like you got a, a quick fix for right now yeah i did which was i was super lucky the boys in town hooked me up because i was calling nice. yeah like calling all over the place yeah. and yeah gonna be out of a truck till like jan like at least mid jan just because you didn't have a radiator grill or what or? well the, the well if if the truck was undrivable, which I th- I drove home from there, so I I thought it was, but I'm no mechanic, so I took it in to one just down the street. They thought it was good to go, and then I went into I, when I saw you guys at home at Home Hardware and JJ. Yeah, you know, shout out Backcountry Metalworks. Yeah, yeah. Good. I went in. He just you like, went right away too. Yeah, I went straight right after I saw you. I drove yeah. right to his place, and he just like boom, it's like told his employee like fabricated Don't a we little, got this little, this thing like up. Go a get one of those sheet he had like a just a sheet metal with a bunch of holes in it mm-hmm. so he just yeah they grabbed a sheet that was like perfect size basically and they just gave her a couple little snips on the corners to Amazing. fit it in and so yeah, easy so, nice and yeah he said i was good to go like um and then he also there's a body shop right down the way where yeah. They are they're skiers and the guy. They're waiting there. for you now. No, well, they're gonna they're gonna try and. Slide you get a bit of so you get can, a bit of a dent in the front too, right? Like the, yeah, my bumper's like pretty yeah. toast and, yeah. and but I mean it could have been way worse. Luckily, I stayed on the road and and the airbags didn't go off. Or That's so funny. You're window. like I hit a deer tonight. Like, I was like, yeah. what? The I know fuck? a deer's like one of my favorite animals. When I was a kid, I <laughs> I pet a deer when I was like seven, maybe. Like the in the, the wild. At, at, oh, in the wild. In the wild. Yeah, I was like in on a family vacation. What? <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, my brother didn't believe me, but I, yeah, we used to go and Bend. There's this place we'd always go for like spring break or family vacations near Mount Bachelor. Yeah. And we, yeah, there's like all these bike paths and we were on a bike ride and I saw there's like a group of deer and I ventured off the, like started walking off the side towards this group of deer. I was like, I'm going to pet one. He's like, and I just, I kind of moved slow up to this deer and yeah, he trusted me. And I you're guess. like seven. So I, like, I wonder if it's because you were a kid too and you've got like. I think I think animals know. Like you've seen some animals oh, they when they're around kids and and and, oh, they and children, and they can sense so. that the yeah. innocence. Yeah. Oh, then you go near an adult, or, and they're like, "No, nope, no, nope, yeah. I don't think so." Yeah, we'll throw. Yeah, you know, uh, you ever see Can't Stop the movie? Mm-hmm. No, that was two thousand nine. Um, first first video that I ever. Oh, one on. of your films. Yeah, yeah I may two, have seen it. I don't remember. Can't it. stop. Two, yeah, with uh, Dominique Janowski is the Solomon filmer is how we met. Mm-hmm. But when I was 15, it was my first trip overseas, like 15, 16. And um, I met Dominique at the beginning of this trip. I used to be a super picky eater because I have an egg allergy, you know. Mm-hmm. But back then I didn't know. So I would like just like kind of, I knew what I could eat that didn't make me sick. So right, I would right. just like eat only That's right. That. Adma, you and Adma had to, having that conversation yeah. in, in Whistler a couple, like last month. Yeah, about my box of food I brought to Japan and yeah, China. Yeah, right, was, right. <laughs> yeah. But I'm um, going. This was before then. I like first international trip. I went to France. I think I ate like baguettes the whole week with maybe some uh, salami or something. Just yeah, in there. jambon, jambon jam- from yeah, us. Yeah, exactly. And so at the end of the week, I like met Dominique, he's a super cool guy, filming for Solomon. And at the end of the trip, I was gonna. He like asked if I wanted to go back to his apartment and stay with him for the night, and then he would take me to the airport. Mm-hmm. And I was down. And as we were walking up to his apartment, I was just like exhausted, carrying my bags up, just like pretty ready to, to get back to some real, like back home so I could start eating some real food. And, like, <laughs> <laughs> um, and as we're walking up the stairs, he's like, yeah, Sami, don't be scared of my cat. It can sense fear. And he had told me earlier on the trip that he didn't have like a normal house cat. He had a wild cat that he found and he had a lynx. <laughs> He had a fucking lynx in yeah. his house, this French guy? Yeah. yeah, and so I'm thinking, like, why would I be scared of your cat, dude? Like, I'm not scared of cats. Like, opens the door, it's and an there's, actual... like, this little mini tiger sitting there, just, like, <laughs> staring at me, like, and I was like, oh, shit, you know, like, intimidated <laughs> for sure. Like, oh, yeah, don't be scared. So I went to pet it, and the cat just, like, <laughs> hissed at me. Yeah, I went to scratch at me. And so I was like, holy shit, kind of like always like a little bit scared of this cat after that. <laughs> yeah. And then like fast forward a couple of years later, we like ended up making this video together. And then I spent like two weeks in the summer at his house with the cat, with the cat <laughs> in Moogly. It, he had it for like 13 years. He lived on the fourth story of this apartment building and the cat could like go outside, but just walk around. Am I good? Yeah, no, you're good. No, yeah. no, you're good. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, the cat would just like <laughs> walk around the corner of the building, but Dominique rescued it from the wild. It was going to die. Like it was really injured and he like nursed it back to health. So it was a lynx? Like what was it? Yeah, like some like sort a of lynx. or something like that? Something like cat. that. It was wild. It wasn't like super big. It was just like a big, healthy house cat. But like mm-hmm. with some, you could tell it was like, a little, like it just looked different. You know? Oh, was it, Matt? It was like a Maine Coon. Have you ever seen those? Yeah. Maine Coon, they're like, they're like, do you know what that is? It wasn't like, it, yeah, it wasn't like a lynx with the crazy ears. It was just yeah, like yeah, kind yeah. of a lynx minx, like a mix. In some kind of like, some kind of crazy feline. <laughs> yeah. But it was, it was gnarly because like, if I'd be in the house chilling with them, like on the back porch, like. Yeah. You know, thinking in my mind, like, this is sick. I'm here at Dominique in France, like, hanging out with this wild cat. I could just, like, pet it. <laughs> yeah. You know, but as soon as my mind, if I would, like, switch over to being a little intimidated by the cat, like, because Dominique had told me, like, stories how his, his friends would, like, come over for, I'm like, isn't your cat nice? And he's like, well, yeah, but, like, don't be scared. He can sense it. Because I guess, like, his friends would come over from the bar yeah. and, like, crash at his house some nights. And then he'd wake. He's like, a couple times I woke up and they were gone. And he'd get like a phone call or a text being like, dude, your fucking cat attacked me in the middle of the night. (laughs) So I was kind of like a little bit like intimidated by this cat. And like at times we'd be chilling. Be like on, like I said, on the back porch feeling good. And then um, if I had like portable cereal and like if I pushed the cat away, like it would always come up on the counter and like, like, what are you eating? You know, and you could push it away and it would like, you know go away but if you were scared it would sense it and just yeah. come right up and like cats are dicks eh? as soon as my, <laughs> yeah, as soon as my mind changed it would just like instantly pick up on it and just come in and try and like take over the situation so animals definitely i think yeah they definitely can feel it and sense it oh, i have, think we can too absolutely as well i was talking to someone on the show yeah. about this the other day is like there's and i fully believe this i've talked about this a bunch it's, it's not to like turn this into like the joe rogan podcast or anything but like there's there's so many different kinds of energy that we have no idea how to understand right yeah, like i said this exact fit like when you walk into a room and I, I use this example a lot right say you walk into a room and there's two people there and they just had like a fucking crazy argument and you walk in and you're like hey what's going on and you're like you sense it no yeah you sure. know something's yeah, going yeah, on yeah. in there right or like you walk in and you see something and you're yeah, like yeah. Yeah. People that are in good moods or happy or like not stressed. Yeah. You, you just feel, feel more comfortable around it, but you don't really know you don't really know how to describe it. You don't know how to contem- you don't know how to quantify it. You don't know how to like I- I- explain any of it, but you just it's a feeling you get. You just know. Mm-hmm. And I think there's all these kinds of energy that we haven't learned how like we didn't know Absolutely. how radio waves work, we didn't know how yeah. TVs work, we didn't know about X rays, we didn't know about this, that, and the other, but I'm sure there's all these different types of energy oh, that sure. we have no idea even how to start to contemplate, like how to measure. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Because there's so there's so many things that like intuition. They would say like that's what they use intuition, right? Like women's intuition or anybody's intuition, like your gut feeling, that or kind like of shit. Mom, like mom's just there. Yeah, right. Yeah, what are you guys doing doing? back there? What? Nothing? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Put the matches Put away. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> so yeah, I, no, for sure we can. Definitely. Right? And I think we all just get so busy and like the way how fast the world's moving, we're just like kind of distracted, distracted, right? Distracted, yeah, further and further away from all that. I wonder if like people back, you know, when they're more simple. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, earlier civil, human civilizations were like oh, yeah, more in sure tune with that for sure. Yeah, for sure. They were. Yeah. Right? Yeah, definitely. But now we just got to try and fucking deal with weird cats <laughs> well, <now they're, laughs> in French apartments. You're lucky. You was it in, where was he? Where did he live? Was it in Paris? He's in Annecy. Annecy. Oh, he's yeah, right yeah, in Annecy. Yeah, in Annecy. <laughs> that was cool. Wow. Yeah, that was definitely a memorable experience. Well, did, you, that. did you ever see any of those um, tanukis? Tanukis. Oh, yeah, a few times. Because what's okay? What's you know what I'm talking about? You know, when you go to Japan and then there's like the picture of that big kind of like oh, cat yeah, thing yeah, with yeah, the big yeah, balls? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of there. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. And what's the deal? So every time you go to a shop or something, there's like the, the statue of that tanuki and it's got like <laughs> big balls. The big balls. <laughs> yeah, what's up with that? <laughs> but I'm, but it is just on the image, but then on the real, it's the same as the lacoon. Uh huh. Yeah, but on the, I don't. The, like that that shape was kind of traditional i think i think so yeah but uh, what's the what's the importance of it is it like a lucky animal or something like that like why is it in front of all the shops with like <laughs> that, two giant testicles that yeah, good yeah. that good he said question. that's what it's looking like that's a that they do they, they just walk like, around yeah, yeah. they yeah. just yeah. sit in the tr- they just sit in the trees all yeah, fat but, with their yeah, balls they always out. got the same shape right got yeah, a big yeah. fat and then in the, on the big ball yeah but <laughs> i don't know why is that just that shape <laughs> but even that japanese movie is kind of same shape 
-hmm. But on the real, it's like totally different. But I don't know why. It doesn't look like that in real life. No, no, no. Same,、oh, okay. same as the raccoon. Okay.、Yeah. Somebody just did it one day and they're like, that's funny. I want to do that. <laughs> I don't know. Should, can we talk about the temples in Japan? Because when, remember Jackie? Yeah. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. was so rad when I went and met up with Jackie before、yeah. we went to Shred. He like brought me to the, the temple and we like prayed to the gods and yeah, asked yeah. for you know, good snow and, and、uh, just to keep us safe while we were out shredding. And that was,、uh, yeah. I definitely really enjoyed that experience. But what, yeah, what is, what's up with the snow gods? And- This one is it's not snow god, it's more Japanese,、uh, Japanese temple. <laughs> It's a difficult one. That's a difficult one. Oh, you、yeah. got this. <laughs> yeah, it's.、Uh, how do I say? But every single kind of each event in Japan, we go to the temple and pray. Well, sometimes can pray for healthy, pray for family, pray for life. Yeah, every single time we go there. But the、um, most important thing in、uh, January 1st. Mm-hmm. It's for the new year. Yeah, Everybody g o to the temple and they pray for the year.、Mm. Yeah. 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 We say kind of shogatsu. It's a first, shogatsu. It's the first three days from January 1st to on the 3rd.、Mm-hmm. It's very important for us. Yeah, it's the beginning of the year.、Mm-hmm. And everybody p r a y for the health yeah, and then kind of. Happiness. Right. Have you, have you been to any of those crazy Japanese festivals that they have? No, we just missed the one because I'm pure t y sure、yeah. that year there was, I was, there's a massive party, big fire. Oh, the oh, Dozen, yeah, Dozen the, Fire Festival. Yeah, Nozawa. In Nozawa.、Right? Yeah, 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 Nozawa. Yeah, yeah. Nozawa. A massive fire festival. I, I never been to there. I've been twice. Oh, nice. Yeah, How about it's, that? It's the craziest shit I've ever been to in my entire <laughs> life. <laughs> That's cra- sick. I'd love cr- to go. The craziest night of my life was、yeah. at this place. So they have this, and I've explained this before, I'll do it quick. So they have like, Do you know what they're, they're, it's like to pray for the harvest or something? Do you know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pray for the harvest. So,、yeah. like, from what I've learned, is they have this big tower that they build out of like wood. Yeah. And it's almost like a pagoda,、mm-hmm. but it's all built with, by hand, with ropes and, and flags. Like, it's, it must take them the whole year to build. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and it's this time, like yeah, 30 foot tall thing. Yeah, yeah, and so they started off at the top of the thing. There's like, they go up a ladder and there's like the, From what I had led to believe, is like the 42 year olds yeah, yeah. In, the, in the all the 42 year old men, they're、yeah. on the top. Yeah. And they're drunk and they're fucking wasted. That's right. Yeah, people drinking all day all long. All day. From the morning to the midnight. I'm just drinking Japanese. So, the, so they're on this like, <laughs>、yeah. imagine this field, right? This empty field. And they're on this like, there's like four posts. And then there's like the, the roof and ceiling. So you can go underneath. And then there's almost like a pagoda style roof.、Yeah. And then on top, there's like fucking 20. Dudes sitting on the top, older dudes, wasted, <laughs> <laughs> super drunk. Yes, yes, on, yes. Underneath, right? There's like, I heard it was like the 24 year olds in the village.、Mm-hmm. They're all in like jumpsuits, like full on, like zip up mechanic jumpsuits.、Yeah. They all have ropes tied to one arm, and the rope is attached to this tower.、Uh-huh. They all, this is, it gets crazier. They all have a tree branch in their hand, like a cedar bough、yeah. that's like this big, right? On so, fire? Not quite, but close. <laughs> that's to put the fire out. Okay. <laughs> so, so,、yeah. so, some kind of dude in like a Sasquatchy, like furs, goes to the top、yeah. and does some ooga booga thing. Yeah. He's like, he does this is ceremonial、yeah. display. And they have these like reeds. It's,、mm-hmm. like, it's like a bundle of sticks. Yeah. Like all these sticks. And he starts tossing, they're stacked on top of the tower. And this guy goes and he starts throwing them off. So, people collect these sticks and they bring them about. I don't know, 50 feet, 100 feet、yeah. up, uh, up this like, path. So the whole time there's like thousands of people in this field. And there's this tower, and then there's like a, an alleyway, or like, a, like an alleyway. And over in this little end is a little bonfire. Yeah. And then they stack all the sticks up. So then they got the taiko drummers going, yes, and yeah, they had this、yeah. little ceremony, and these、yeah. little kids start walking to the thing with the sticks that have a little bit of flame on them. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you hear this. Yeah! <laughs> and this fucking Japanese guy sprints full speed from the fire that's like 100 yards away, full speed with one of these things in his hand, and it's on fire, like fully on fire. And he runs right into these kids that, that are attached by ropes underneath this thing, and he fucking full on swings like a baseball and goes smash! You sm- swear to God, he smashes this one dude in the face. 
And then all the other goods that are underneath, they come with the tree boughs and they start whapping them and trying to put the flame out, right? And, right? And then so the dude's yeah. like, oh, right? So then you hear all this noise and you look over and there's like 10 dudes running from the fire all with the thing. And it's a full on like battle royale. Yes. Like, people yeah. are smoking. No, in the Zawa. <laughs> yeah, it's in the Zawa. People, yeah, people, what? people are I missed that by like two days. Oh, make sure you get there at some point. So the other, like, there's dudes with these reed bundles and they're smashing people and they're trying. Trying. So their job is to try and light this thing on fire, and the dudes are trying to put the fire out. They got to take, okay, I right? see. So this battle goes on for like an hour, but the whole time that this is happening, you're laughing, the whole time this is happening, remember thousands of people in, in this field watching this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Every like, I don't know. 100 meters or so there's like this like big tall tower like uh, with like flags yeah. Yeah. and whatever those are sake stations so you walk up there and there's these giant wasted. there's these giant vats of yeah, sake barrel, and right? you go with yeah, a cup yeah. and then you just pour it and they yeah. full so every single person is annihilated super drunk on sake <laughs> yeah. while there's this battle royale there's sparks flying and all this shit it's, it's going insane and then, so they eventually get to a point where it starts to light on fire. They finally get it. They <laughs> untie the kids. All the dudes crawl down. And then everybody kind of backs up and they light this thing on fire. And it's like the biggest pile of fire you've ever seen in yeah, your entire crazy. life. Yeah. So this thing epic. is like this yeah. big, massive thing's on fire. And then the, the stilts that it's on, it collapses and it hits the ground. And then you get this wave of flame. It, it was the wildest, crazy. wildest night. Yeah, and then wild. the next day we went skiing and you see like, bunch of those kids and they're sitting there and they've got like patches on their yes. eyes yes. and they're like right. scrapes and they're covered in soot and shit <laughs> and yeah. like, how do you feel after watching that festival I was, it feels weird it was amazing I, I was like what is this so that yeah. that's only so we watched the festival right yeah, and yeah. we were with my friend Hugh this big Australian guy he's like 6'3 he's massive yeah and he ended up sneaking in to get one of those things. They're like, get out of here, get out of here. So he drank so much sake. Put him in the battle. <laughs> he start, he, he's like to the point where like, okay, we got to babysit this guy. We're drunk, but we're still doing all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. So everyone's starting to go away. One of our friends, Mike, he disappears because I think he got in a fight with his girlfriend. He was, yeah. he was Japanese. Okay. And he... We called him. He's like, where are you? He was like, I'm in a rice field. So he ended up walking off into some rice field or something. So I'm like, okay, fine. We're looking for our crew. And I see them. And I'm with my friend Hugh. I'm just holding him up. So I put him on the ground. He sits and he lies down. And I'm like, stay here. So I run over to see our friends. Talk to them for a minute. I look back and my friend is gone. So I'm like, oh, fuck. Where did Hugh go? So I walk over to where he was. And there's a little embankment that rolled over. And in the Zawa Onsen, right? Yeah. You know, Onsen is like yeah, the hot, yeah, hot springs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they've got these hot spring canals running throughout the whole yeah. town. So I look over, I'm like, where the fuck is you? So I go to this edge and there's like a retaining wall. So I look down and it's dark and I think it's a path. So I jump off the path and I jump into one of those canals, like up to what? my belly button <laughs> in water. And it's like two in the morning. It's like minus, minus five. And I'm like, oh, oh shit. So I don't know where my friend and he's, he's passed out. Yeah. I'm soaking wet. Yeah. I'm freaking out. I run into, I, so I start running back to the hostel. I'm like, I got to get changed. <laughs> I got to find my friend Hugh. Yeah. So I come out of the hostel and I see a fire truck. And I run up to the fire truck. I'm like, hey, hey, hey. I'm like, oh, uh, I look uh, big uh, gaijin. <laughs> 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 right so he was I don't know if he was barfing but Guy Jin's like white person right yeah. so they're like oh wait 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 so I'm waiting for like get back on the hydro. I'm waiting for like uh, I'm waiting for like I don't know 20 minutes I'm getting concerned so another fire truck drives up yeah. and then they start pointing at me so I, I go to walk around the back of the fire truck and there's my friend on a stretcher Yo. laid out on a stretcher on the back of this like what? tiny fire truck because it's Japan so they're like yeah, two, two thirds yeah, of this yeah, side so, small. <laughs> so I'm like oh there's my friend and our friend so he and my buddy that I'm with like I found him at the hostel they point at us and they go like, get on the fire truck Yeah. so I'm standing on the back all the firefighters are sitting on the bench he's lying down on a stretcher at their feet yeah. and me and him are standing on the bumper of the fire truck holding on to the pole and they start ripping through Nazawa back what? to the hostel <laughs> yeah and like so we're holding on we're swinging back and forth we're like we're on the fucking fire truck <laughs> so we finally get back to the, the hostel and now I, okay we're back I know he's fine I'm like I'm getting a fucking picture of this <laughs> but this is before like digital cameras and shit so I jump up run into the hostel run to get my camera come back start taking photos we're like no photos no photos <laughs> so they take him off the stretcher yeah. they walk him into the front door and they just go 
Douche! Drop them on the ground, turn around, and leave. You gotta get to one of those festivals, man. Yeah, I missed it by. I, I was gonna stay. It was like happening the next night or something, or mm-hmm. even that night potentially. But I had like exhausted. Like oh, the kind okay. of like already blew them off pretty much to go meet up with him. Right, not right. blew them off, but they understood. They were cool about it. Like, yeah, yeah. Hey, like go I'm gonna get, yeah, check yeah. out the stuff. But it was time yeah. to go back and like yeah link up with them. And then Jackie, <laughs> it was so rad. I met Jackie through that yeah. whole like kind of. Just random experience of, and then he ended up coming back with me and like hung with the the kind crew and like ended up making the whole trip because he was just showing us around, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. all the local restaurants nice. and all the local. Jack is yeah. the best. Jack yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, we had a good time. That's sweet. Have you ever sure. seen that? Have you seen any of those? There's, oh, there's so many crazy festivals. You know that big log one? I know. Yeah, yeah. So many. Have yeah. you seen that? There's this festival. There's like this no. log. It's a log like the width of this of this table. Whoa. Yeah, we and, say like a mikoshi. Yeah. Yeah, we got we are carry on uh, like a small temple, mm-hmm. and then I don't know how many people we can carry. That depends on the size, but sometimes the, the twenty or the thirty people on the carry on the shoulder. Twenty thirty people carry this Yeah, and the big on the oh. temple, oh. and then we uh, and then we have, have some battle. A battle with yeah, them. Battle oh, with like them. like like a, like a on joist, the, like a like a joust. Every, everybody kind of carry on the mikoshi and have couple and kind of fighting. So like twenty together. thirty people holding this yeah, giant like yeah. telephone pole and like you run into each other. That's yeah. crazy. There's another one where there's just like log the size of this table and they sit on it and they ride down. Yes, the hill. yeah, ride down the hill. Yeah, right? yeah, I seen that on I seen that online. It's crazy. I don't know that what is that happening, but so they run like thirty on thirty with a log and just like boom. I mean, like yeah, this? Mikoshi on that kind of yeah. battle royale, Whoa, like yeah. a jou- like a like a like a badass joust. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's nuts. That's pretty wild. <laughs> yeah, what, yeah. what what is it about Japanese culture that has all these crazy festivals? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. But very traditional. So I didn't feel anything about that things on the festival. Mm-hmm. But moving to Canada, oh, Japanese Japan has a crazy culture. In it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But one of my favorite cultures, for yeah. sure. It's one of my favorite Japan, places, definitely. too. Yeah. Like, yeah. For, first time I went to Japan, yeah. um, and I was cruising the streets. This is way before the podcast. And I was yeah. like walking it's through Tokyo. Oh, yeah. And I was going over a bridge, and there's like a you know concrete underpass and where like the river goes through. Yeah. And I looked down, and I looked closer, and it was like, where a homeless person lives. Yeah. Um, yeah but yeah. it was like a right. box that was like set up perfectly like a little house and there were yeah. like bags of cans that were perfectly tied and perfectly stacked and the shoes were stacked. And I'm like, this homeless person is more clean and more organized than anybody that <laughs> yeah. I know. Yeah. Like blew me away, man. Yeah. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah. Makes me think about I went to one of my trips early on in Japan, then we ended up going to China. Oh, for real? With MSP up yeah, to the where the last Olympics was. By the, the nuclear power plant? Yeah, but before, no, not there. Like in the actual, <laughs> out in the, the oh, mountains where yeah, I can't yeah. remember then in the resort where they had the actual slope style and half pipe yeah. events. Mm-hmm. We went out there and just seen like the gnarliest living conditions I've ever seen in my whole life. Oh, really? We like, yeah, it was, we flew in and drove this bus like all night. The, there was no heat on it. And I remember okay. it was like crazy cold. Everyone, we were like on all our ski gear, but still like freezing <laughs> on the bus. Wow. We got to this place. Again, I'm just kind of like young and just out of it, been in, yeah. you know, eating out of my box that I brought. Yeah, you're right, right. Dumont ate my last Oreo a couple of days ago. I'm pissed about that. Yeah, right. I'm just like, ah. No, I'm just kidding. We are, we are all like, yeah, we're having such a good time. But I'm, we were just like, it was so foreign. I was like, what the fuck is going on? Where are we going? Wake up in the next morning in this hotel. And the hotel was sweet. It was super nice. We're at this new resort that yeah. this guy who was there with us showing us around, he had built built the resort this guy was a trip he wore the same white jumpsuit every day same exact thing but brand new and and he would just yeah like was rolling with us in this like 10 day trip and he he made this resort in like six months i think it took him to build the whole thing because they have that because they they tell the government like hey this is what i'm going to do and the government's okay and they're like okay thousands of people let's build this i'm not too sure but it was definitely like something wasn't right because uh, we were like outside this resort, really nice, like five star hotel, yeah. and it was so sad. All the people working in the hotels were just like living outside and in, in the back, and like soup, like you know, just like tarps. Not, not over. great conditions. And, yeah, like super. So you're feeling this is, this is one of your first trips. Uh, yeah, one of my first trips. I was just I'd never seen like this was the start of the poverty, but like 
yeah, like I just was like, well, that's so messed up. Like people working here, like, you know, we're in here and they're out there like in, in these like living in the tarps. And then we started driving after our time at the ski hill. We started driving back towards Beijing and like seeing people literally like living in the sides of the mountains and like dirt holes mm -hmm. and like dudes walking down this, this street as we drove by in the bus with like huge, you know, like sticks the size of Volkswagen uh, car you know on their back like, yeah to carry, go, like, like stay like their to home and build stuff. home yeah. and, like for firewood and stuff or yeah whatever. <laughs> yeah and as we started getting closer back to beijing like the living conditions just are like you know pretty bad pretty bad then you like go through kind of the farmland and then all of a sudden it was just like Suburbs boom, big mountain. beijing yeah right? and it was wow. like yeah he, but he pretty okay thanks dude yeah, we're stoked to have you boom yeah man i'm stoked you guys are here this is yeah, super fun you. you're, you're yeah. making you're making uh, this weekend but let's, less less brutal <laughs> yeah good i'm glad to help you out it's just such a yeah well at least it could always be worse man that's what we gotta mm -hmm. yeah. always keep that perspective right but yeah, we talked to you. Should talk about your, uh, <laughs> about your uh, how how about that leg press in the garage? We got oh we've been yes, getting after yeah, yeah. You, you had you had the leg press last time. I was telling you the other day. I'm like, I want to get on that. We leg got the press. leg press. I, Normally, I was gonna hit it after riding the hill today. That's like my early season tradition or really? routine. Yeah. Just to like get that extra that like extra that burn, extra burn. So you're like the next time you ski, you're like, oh, this ain't yeah. nothing. Well, just like yeah, because riding Revy too, especially like we have friends coming. There's so much vertical yeah. that we get so strong if you do spend time riding the hill which like when i first came to town i didn't even ride the hill for two years like i never went up there once we were just sledding all backcountry stuff yep but yeah if you're used to riding the hill you just get yeah. like so strong from yeah, lapping yeah. up there and then friends come to town they just like so, that's that's like, the thing too is like it. i've always been a resort skier always right just because it's yeah. you know i work nights so i can go up and shred all day yeah. and then you know there's that lure like there's the you know, Alpine guys and there's the backcountry people and there's like, there's different layers of that. Like, like there's the super, the super committed, like oh, I'm going to this place and I'm bringing, this is how much my gear weighs and all that kind of stuff. Like that's the one extreme of like schema or, or yeah. alpinism yeah. or, and then there's like the backcountry crew. Like I'm going to go and stay at this hut for three days. We're going to go to Spearhead or whatever. Like good for you. Yeah, and then there's like, all that. then there's the sled nets, the sled necks that are just like, we're going to go and just sled or we're going to go sled ski. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's people like me who, for a lot of reason, just, just cause it's what I was able to do. Just resort ski. Yeah. yeah. And like, just go and go and go. But it, fucking destroys your body man yeah it's pretty, yeah if you're used to riding yeah. pow right when you go up on the hill it's definitely right way yeah. on the board. Yeah, like yeah. some of you pro skiers are so soft man no skiing way, bro. skiing pow all the time no. like spend <laughs> spend a month shredding hard pack and fucking we chug know. no we know where it's at but that's the thing is people don't commit to that like for me i'd much rather yeah i would much rather put the effort in and like even get away from the resort like that's where it started I, like when you're a young kid skier yeah. you get up to the hill and it just seems like you know so foreign you're out there on the mountain everything's so fresh and then after you get a taste of that and like waiting in lift lines and now like all of a sudden ski turn is an option and you get there like go outside the boundary line even and get just away from it a little bit mm -hmm. then you're like a little bit closer to actually being out in nature like by right. yourself yeah. in the mountains and now with like snowmobiles or the new uh, like the kingpins are just the ski touring bindings in general it's just yeah. opened up like for me such a new world that i like yeah. i love going to the hill to just get the fast laps in early season but, yeah like, good condition do you know what do you know what i actually ski king pinkins right now because of you oh yeah yeah because nice. so i was looking you. i was looking at getting uh like love a, those a new touring setup mm. and i think i don't know what i had before but no i think i had like the guardians the solomon guardians or something because yeah. you know oh, those were like the first yeah, yeah, yeah. Ones, yeah. they were kind of like the first real generation like i think so oh yeah, well, yeah like they're, yeah. they're kind of like the, the first real yeah. generation yeah. away from like the freechy free rides or like full no the alpine trekkers which big shout dude t hall would go all the way up rogers pass big gnarly mission like huge hike in alpine trekkers just because back then yeah the bindings were so bad yeah if you wanted to ride or like do any sort of trick with those big like yeah plates on your yeah. skis i just yeah i would always down if i was ever touring i was just like i'm not gonna trick or like right, anything right. just kind of do some turns but yeah. so yeah, t hall would go up with like day records <laughs> way up Rogers Pass and riding the craziest shit in like 100% cotton tea uh, hoodie. Okay. I'm pretty sure underneath, but yeah, like a fucking boss though. Right, Seriously. that's what he does. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I chose them because I'm like, I'm on the hill. I'm like, I need something for the slack country, blah, blah, blah. And like, when you ski every day and you're doing that and you're like, when, when, 
you buying stuff, yeah. you make sure you get what's going to be right. Yeah. And even though like the difference between like a Dinafit binding or Dynafit binding and a, and a marker binding or all these other bindings, like, well, which one do I choose? Which one's this? Which one's that? And then I saw a photo of you or I, I don't know if I talked to you or something. And I'm like, wait a minute. I'm like, oh, I watched, I think was, I watched some kind of a clip or something on online. And I was like, I just saw what you King, did. And you're wearing, changed my life. Bro. And you're wearing the kingpins. I'm like, <laughs> if did. Sammy Carlson yeah. can do that in a kingpin, I'll be just fine doing Dude, whatever do the fuck it is I do. Right? No People problem. watching, yeah, like, I'm like, that's probably the most, com- like, one of the most common questions I'm asked on Instagram is like, what's up with the kingpins? And like, if they're good to go, like ride them hard. But yeah, most I, of my friend was wondering, is oh, yeah. Sammy doing the kingpin like that? Oh yeah. <laughs> the only shit. time I've ever had like big problems with the kingpin is if I get lazy and I don't clean out, but that's like all tech bindings. You got to mm-hmm. make sure to just clear the ice, yeah. you know, the build up. Right, right, right. Right. I've had like first couple, like first years doing it still kind of bit of a park radish, like just not accepting the responsibility of riding such a dope product right and like clearing it out but now like every time my transition is like boom both the toe and the heel i make sure to to yeah. clear them so no snow build up but that's only like one of the times i had problems is just getting too much ice do you lock your toe, toe out well yeah. i used to jj yeah. jj was like i think he locks his toe no i don't anymore the new 13 the spring is just like a little bit stronger because they went the from the six spring ones. they had like the six spring to yeah and they've they've, they've made it three i think or something because that because they had like the, the three on each side right and then it's smaller is it two or one now? it's smaller i don't even it i feel like it's like one or two but the, it's just stronger like as soon as you click in like first time i clicked into the kingpin it's like oh, the, the new 13 is like oh yeah here right. we go nice. and i would lock it out but the other time i had problems is just because i feel like people following me i don't want them to be like riding around locking their toes because that's super committing you know and i right. when i do lock my toes if you're not i know that I'm if like, you're not skiing like some yo, crazy and f- hopefully not coming. right <laughs> but there's some you can you if you're know, not skiing some, some crazy french like 50 degree slope sure. or like you know or yeah well, do even, something gnarly like there's no need to lock them out yeah well for some of the stuff i was just, just not sure like mm-hmm. if i could trust it yeah um but then I, I just kind of got in the habit of locking it out but there's like that's a super committing move and i have blown out like i've ate if I've, I've fallen hard enough to where like could just like boom blow out both toe pieces like yeah. blown off the ski <laughs> broken pins but it's like the type I, I feel like sometimes especially consumers they'll like message me be like yo i got your uh sorry i'm getting way off topic but no, like, i ate shit to the point where like my binding should have broke like, you know like <laughs> some you know like if you drive a ferrari and you Jump it off a curb and like yeah. smash into the bank. You're probably gonna damage that too because it's you know yeah. like it's all yeah. F one fifty, Ferrari, whatever it is. <laughs> but now with the White Walkers, sometimes like mo- I'm always getting like definitely. I've been so honored and humbled by like how many people do like the ski and they're just like yeah. best ski setup ever. Because when I we designed the White Walker, yeah. it, I was like in between. I was riding the Magic J and then the J like their the ARV sixteen one sixteen, mm-hmm. and I was just like in between these two skis didn't have a ski to like ride the way I wanted to like progress my skiing. I was like just riding too hard for both those magic J's coming out the bottom lines. They're so wide. Just literally like taking so much air under the skis, put me in the back seat, too much rocker, hmm. the JJ 116. I was just like over flexing when I really needed the ski to be there for me. So when right, I set right. up for the white walkers, we like definitely were trying to make like a super high performance. Are you still tweaking charging. the ski? Like, uh, like year to year to year? Like I'm not sure right now with the 116, we're trying to explore more with this 121, the new shape, mm-hmm. because it's I'm really excited about the potential of it. But we're running into a couple complications just with where that edge, like where the edge meets the sidewall. There's like this hinge point that we're kind of trying to solve. We mm-hmm. we fixed it now to the point where it's super fun. But like at least for the style ride, I want to do, I want it to be like even stronger. How, how often are you? But, how often are you like having meetings and like doing like? pretty De- often, development dude. development well, stuff with the ski like are you actively like every every summer or every you know spring are you like hey cool when are we having our meetings on on the ski and like what are we doing with oh, it this year oh, what yeah, are we for, like for sure and i'm constantly bugging like when i first signed with my <clears> mod <throat> i was pushing this shape with the 121 which is like 18 inches from the tip and tail i don't know if you've seen it it's like a 3d that beveled mm-hmm. yeah. that beveled shape and and even if you have it in just the tip it is a cool feeling and pow it like makes just enough difference where you can roll it over but I had this, because when you land switch, or if you do a nose butter, there's like two points on the ski that'll hook yeah. up. So the whole idea with the ski was to like free up that spot, right. you know? Mm-hmm. So you can just like, 
can't give up all my my uh, plans here. Whatever, you got but, do you tell tell them about yeah, your they, plans because then they'll buy them. Yeah, but no, the idea was like free up <laughs> this like the those two spots. Like right. anybody ride pal knows like knows about it. You there's a, there's a spot, spot where it'll yeah, it'll catch or it'll yeah. just be like there's not. Like right where like the camber would end. Yeah. So I started. Well, right where the the rocker contact points hit right. is like the most for like people watch. I always would detune that, and I felt like mm-hmm. it was like pretty cool feeling that you would get like because there's this like flat spot type feeling on certain skis right. that you get there at the rocker contact point, especially when you start getting over like a one twelve into like the one sixteen range. So with this, yeah, the 121, I've been like telling them like from the day I signed basically with them like, yo, this idea is kind of cool. What do you guys think about it? And then I was like, things progressed and I got closer, like working with them closer and closer to now, like the product, the head product the guy. I grew up, I raced for half a year, but his uh, now wife, her dad was my race coach, the oh. only one I had. <laughs> oh, really? And he used to like give me such shit about my turns because if you watch my turns, it's like pretty untraditional. The way from like a ski turn, I'm like always leaning. Right. Like, especially now, I'm like really leaning into. And you the go turns in for the stuff. Sammy smash, like the yeah, like exactly. the drop or just hit. like even like a layback. <laughs> only like, really one style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just lean and, back, lift your legs out, and like extend them into a big. <laughs> yeah. It's it's funny that um, not a lot of people ski that style. A few there's a few guys in Whistler that kind of have a similar style. I don't know if you know like Maddie Richard. Um, he used to work. He used to do some competition. But there's these dudes from Nova Scotia that used to come out called yeah. the from the Acadians. Yeah. And they'd all have that same kind of style where they'd go through and they'd be like low, and then Super whip fun. the skis around, drop the hip, boom, boom pow, slash yeah. back up, and then a half turn, boom, pow, slash back up. Yeah. It's like it's, but it's this, but it's like it. the Sammy turn. Yeah, there's so many different ways to do it, but it's super fun sometimes. And that's a move when you're riding pillows. It's definitely a move that you can oh, okay. like, you need slow to yourself have, down yeah, a bit. slow yourself down. Like sometimes all you can do, like you don't have time to make a, a turn. You can just like stab at it. Boom. Shut your speed down like that. But then there's like mm-hmm. a million ways you can do yeah. that move too, which is super fun to play with. Yeah. Um, that but yeah, with you. like Armada now, like the product guy, I can call him like, I try to just let them know, like, yo, I know it's 1030 on a Sunday night, but I just, you know, I just, just, had an inspiration. I just got this idea. <laughs> <laughs> Call me whenever. Yeah. yeah so we're cool. cool like that. We're always talking. and Yeah, I was wondering about that because you don't. That, so that's one of the things that I've noticed is that you don't actually talk about that much <clears throat> or, or Where? Um, just on social media well, yeah, stuff that's or whatever. Yeah. Well, which now I'm like learning like how much that is a representation of mm-hmm. like. Because we know it's the Sammy. Nice, it's this, I know it's your ski. The White Rocker is your ski, um, yeah. and and I but just I, I just think about in comparison to like, you know, whenever someone does a pro model and all these skis yeah. do so much to really push like this is the process and this is every little bit and pieces and we're gonna tell you all the details and all the things that we went through about it, right? Yeah. But you kind of just let the skis talk. Well, yeah, and like I'm from an era too where like companies marketed their products and like the athletes, mm-hmm. so like I'm still kind of, I guess used to that in a way i guess but it's like mm-hmm. we communicate i'm not even like, talking about you doing it i'm talking about like the everybody jumps on like there's there's such an oversaturation of content where they're like okay we need to talk about this or we need to talk about this like like back in the day like if you if you listen to a band right and they have a new album that comes out every once in a while you may see like the making of documentary of that album yeah right and it was only once in a while there'll be one or there'll be one here but now every single album that's ever fucking made there's a behind the scenes two or three camera documentary of it do you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and i think that's kind of like if you take that same kind of idea to into the ski industry or snowboard industry everybody like this whole industry thrives on content how how or how long it lives whether it's you know super um valuable stuff like yup or, or or a movie or if it's super consumable and quick like the instagram story i took on the chairlift of the snow sparkles oh, today yeah, you know what beautiful. i mean like i got one on my story too. yeah exactly oh, right yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah, if, if like okay we're gonna build this we're gonna build this ski and this is the this is the process well let's document it how can we how can we share that with people how can we put that out of there right yeah. and it's almost it's like almost that. too much sometimes yeah. right like yeah. if, if there's if there's a good story to it yeah. tell yeah. that story but if there's not a good story and it's just fucking content for the sake of content i don't know if i'm down with that and are you is that maybe why 
like I haven't seen so much. Yeah, because it's oh, like well, man, I, yeah, I just I think for me, I just try to. There's only so much time in the day, you know. So it's yeah. like honestly, if I took this whole season off, I could plug the feed every day. I have yeah. fucking terabytes of footage that no one's ever seen before. You know, Henrik Harlow told me that too on the yeah, show. He's like, like I, he's got shit from five years ago, tricks that he's oh, done so that do nobody's I'm, seen. I'm sitting on like four or five years of GoPro footage no one's seen that we're about to. Really, it's coming out soon, but nice. But yeah, that's like I I consciously I choose that. Like that's for me. Like I consciously make that decision to like as an athlete. Like I want to focus on like producing the best ski content that I can. Like from a tricks, they're like an athletic standpoint, right? With the idea of like kind of where I try to. I'm and too much, too much junk, too much junk waters it down, right? Dude, I'm one of few athletes left that has had that connection to like the original free skiers, which I think is like so funny. Now, like you refer to free skiing as like free skiing, where like I just talk I, like skiing. That's what I call it. It's, like, right. Skiing. Yeah. Right. There's like ski racing. There's mogul skiing. There's park skiing. You can say like backcountry, but I'm like I just think of this as like skiing. Yeah, skiing. And yeah. free skiing is like comes from ski racers that's like what ski racers do when they're not training they go, they go free, free skiing, skiing right? oh yeah, yeah. Right, right right and now like it's kind of it's funny to like see this full kind of circle in a way where i know that's kind of like competition how much it just drives life and like you were never going to get away from certain right things in life it's just the way it is but with like this whole olympic and conclude like now being included in skiing their park skiing just the way some of it's been a little bit surprising how fast it changed the sport. Right, because like, it was before it was like, that was like, the, that was where people could go to not have to deal with that shit. Yeah, it was like, and, you know, the whole fuck fist thing and like, mm, this is like our buddies having a jam format. Yeah, We're having we fun and there's, yeah, and there's yeah. no pressure and it's easy yeah. and it's fun. And yeah. then, which is all good too. I'm not trying to say like, I, like, I, I know that's always, there's going to be a space for that, but it's like, it's just been surprising to see how fast it's like kind of the history of the sport has been like a bit erased or like forgotten about mm-hmm. or just, so yeah, or just or the transition transition or like into it, kids right? coming up but that's one thing i've felt like with ski culture is like there's not that much like the history of the sport like in snowboarding and skateboarding i feel like you, there's like a little bit more of this like yeah like yeah i agree i agree with you, you know? i agree with you with the skating like surfing and stuff like that yeah. if you ask if you ask some kid who's 22 years old 23 years old yeah who is evan raps yeah exactly they have they'd, no have, idea. they'd have no fucking idea yeah, right exactly. they'd have absolutely who's skulking sprang they have yeah. no idea who he is right yeah. yeah and that's for me i'm just trying to stay true to kind of like that was part of the competition like why i moved away mm-hmm. is like because I had the opportunity to like be involved with some of those. Well, what do you like, think we OG. need to do? To, what do you think we need to do to like preserve that or like, well, I think or, or bring it, or, to, like, or bring attention to it or like celebrate it more? You yeah, know? celebrate it more. It's just it's a shame just with like Powder Wars not being around anymore and like some of the, like mm-hmm. just the magazines being erased. I think it's like a bit of a transitional moment, but it's up people like you and myself and like. There's a lot of pot. Like that's the, that's the next wave. I saw someone like so. I'm gonna try not to like pat myself on the back right but i started the first like skiing podcast yeah and then powell came in and then there was a couple other little ones and then uh adam from out of bounds podcast is out and now there's blister and then there's this one and then there's the other one so i I read a i think rogie put it on twitter or something the day and it's like this is like the early 2000s when all the ski magazines came out and there's always there's like Tons of them, like free skier, and well, obviously lasted, but like freeze was with the podcast scene, you see freeze and stuff. So there was that 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 explosion of all those print productions, but now it's like a podcasting thing, right? Mm-hmm. So I think it's just maybe a transition, and yeah. so like I was around, I was skiing in those days, and I know about that, but I was just kind of witnessing it. I wasn't chronicling it. I don't feel like I have maybe the right or the right knowledge to be like, all right, let's dive deep. And talk mm. about those guys that I was just mentioning, like, you know, Brad Holmes and, you know, dancing yeah, on a car, no, like, you know, that kind of shit. Powell's that guy. Yeah. He fills that role. A little bit. To, to a, because he was back a there. He, he's, he, he does more. Sort of, of from the couch. Like, yeah. He saw it no, exactly. And that's what I mean. Like, he, like, I, same thing with me. I'm from the couch, man. Like, I know you guys. <laughs> well, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know Powell that well. You know, but, but no, I mean, but he was, he I, was I know, involved in the, dude. he was involved in the culture yeah. then. Yeah. So yeah, he, which, he was, he was, you know, team rep for K2. He was involved in the culture. He knew those guys then personally. He was more a part of it than I was then. I was consuming the media. I was reading magazines. I was going to like movie premieres. He was part of the industry then. So, you know, it's up to someone like him to help 
yeah, push that culture really, along. Yeah, and the companies I, too, I think too, and like the companies need to be kind yeah, of keep in I, mind I, I, I agree. that are going to be involved in. I agree. In 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 this style, like yeah, in skiing, they need to be able like to try and keep that heritage alive. I think it's been mm-hmm. and that's one thing. At first, I was pretty turned off by social media because I felt like it was kind of pushing out some sort of like legends in the sport were getting replaced by people that are just more focused on like self promoting. Right. And so I was kind of a little bit like, I'm not into that. And now I understand like there's definitely, it brings, there's goods and there's right, good, right. like positive and negatives about it. Now, I agree with that too, because before you got to the point where you were like, you've gone through both generations, right? You got you, when you first came up, if you are one of the best skiers in the world, if you had talent, you had skill, people found you, mm-hmm. right? They signed you, you became a pro skier, right? And you had that, and then people marketed you, yeah, because they were able to use you. They, they used you as a tool. That's why they paid you money yeah. to market their brand, yeah. right? Mm. And then we get to a point where now, oh, people can just do that on their own. We don't have yeah. to do this anymore. Like the company's like, oh, we don't have to do this well, as yeah, much exactly. anymore. Yeah. So they kind of step back and like, you go and do it, and we'll give you so, like yeah. a fraction of the money that we maybe we spent in the past, right? Yeah, yeah. So no longer are these brands like they still like brands still have obviously like pro riders and stuff, and they do do it to a certain extent, mm-hmm. but it's not to what it was before. Yeah, where they're not renting like, like a thirty five thousand dollar night house. At X Games, to exactly, put up exactly, right, right. So <laughs> no, you're no longer like these superstars because then they can rely on these people that have these massive engagements based on very, Which, very uh, the, the, like short term value content. Yeah, there, like I right? said, there's po- there's like ups and there's right? definitely but, positive, negative, and right. I've seen it kind of. It feels like it's kind of deflated a bit of the value, and sometimes you see, I think from my perspective, people coming into. Uh, I don't want to sound like, yeah, like yeah. people come into the industry and don't understand their value to these like big, you know, million dollar companies, multi-million dollar brands or right. even billion dollar companies. They just don't understand the value. And when, like you said, people start like doing these things that are super valuable, like providing s- super valuable assets to these companies. And it's not recognized as such because well, there's so much mm-hmm. extra that just gets this, it gets lost in, in all of it. And I saw, yeah. And I see like kind of. But what I was trying to start to say was like I try I kind of make a conscious effort to like stay true to that movement and like mm-hmm. as a result of that sometimes I just don't have the energy to like engage the way that maybe other people do that aren't as focused on like that's fair being out all day and like right trying to push uh, like that's fair the film like they're doing it yeah you're old totally school. different you're yeah. old school yeah I'm old school or like connected to it and just trying to move like. But but with my riding, like I'm trying to just stay like connected to what has gone down right. and like. That's, that, that's interesting that okay. It's interesting you say that. I get 100 percent where you say like you came up at a time where well, all the things I just described, like you're old school in that way, right? Like you're gonna do what you need to do to promote yourself as you would normally, but you're not gonna go overboard to to the extent that someone who's coming into the industry now and that's required of them, right? Mm. So like you almost grandfathered into this new era. Because you've come up through that zone. So they're not necessarily expecting you to put out, you know, seven posts or nine posts a week and, you know, TikTok mm-hmm. this and do that shit, right? Whereas brand new athletes that come up that's that are true. in their early 20s, that's all they've really known and that's what their job is, right? Yeah, when they yeah, get yeah. hired, that's what right. they think their job is. You know yeah. what I mean? So there's that different, there's that different, those two different generations. Mm-hmm. But the- that's the social media promotion side. But on the skiing side, you're still kind of on that cutting edge well, where you're like too, trying I to push say, forward. Like, I think as a result of that, like you're seeing a lot of the level. I mean, and I know skiing is like not all. It's not just about like getting as gnarly as you can. It's like about the, like obviously the lifestyle and like having fun and just being in the mountains to me, like getting away from kind of some of the stresses that are like everyday life or if you live in the city like you know you get up to the mountains and you can just like fully let go like at least you used to see people get on the mountain and they just like fully like just like let go they're like freaks you know like they can (laughs) allow this version of themselves like that that they can be so i know that's that is like what it like that is like a big part of skiing Mm -hmm. um but i think as a result like you see like the level of professional skiing like there's kind of been like when i first got to town here I went to the gym where that's where I got my leg press from. 
Did you buy it from the gym? They were getting a new Nick, one. Well, he got it. He had it in his garage, but I first went in there. I'm Dude, I saw like, that. I want. I want one. <laughs> down from Hood River, like the gym there. The lady, you know, she would. She hooked me up with a free gym membership for like the whole time I lived in Hood River, and I just tell her like, yeah, I'm, if my friends come to town, I would bring them into the gym or tell my buddies in town about the gym. Mm-hmm. And she was just down to support me as an athlete to help me like get yeah. strong and That's help awesome. me on my way. Yeah. And I came to town and I was just like. You know, went into the gym, introduced myself to the guy, told him I'm a pro skier, and um, uh, like, would you be interested in helping me with the uh, like, give me a free gym membership? I'll tell my buddies to come in here, blah blah blah. And he just laughed at me, like, "What do you mean? Like, you get a free hat? Like everyone else in town? Like you're a pro skier? You know, you just get a free hat?" And I just laughed because like I really appreciated that comment. Right, right. He, be- call, he called because, you. He's like, "Yeah, yeah everybody because everybody thinks they're a pro skier." Cause... Yeah, but I think it kind of as a result, like, in people. It's, it's hard for me to tell them they're not. Like, if someone makes a living from that, I'm not trying to, like, right, belittle right. people like yeah. that. But I'm just saying, like, I feel like as a result you're, of this, you're, if the I could, level If of, I could interrupt you for a minute, you're judging them based on your... I'm not judging them. Okay, so you're, you're... I'm saying what I'm trying to say is, like, as a pro skier, I felt like as, like, um, social media has maybe, like, in some ways lowered, like, a... Maybe like the respect of being a professional skier is yeah. like mm-hmm. has it's kind of like yeah. it's it's uh, changed that in a way. No, I agree. Where I could feel 100%. it when I first came to town. People would kind of think that like that they like guides, you know, they can shed. And like, nah, dude. Like, yeah, the boys are in town, and there's a reason like why we're here and doing this. Mm-hmm. And that's like for me, I'm so grateful to have this opportunity, like to yeah. to live the life and like to make a decent living skiing that i'm always like i'm committed to the craft dude i'm gonna hike the jump till i fucking land the trick right and even if the shot doesn't go in the movie like i'm still gonna get that repetition in and then next time i'm gonna be a little bit better for it and like just committed so that's what i'm trying to say like i'm i choose to stay committed to like the art the craft focus on that and i'm super grateful that my sponsors like give me that freedom right right yeah yeah. and And that's what separates that's what separates the good from the great right you get those you get those guys oh you get a free hat those kind you know those kind of guys yeah they're good they're good they're good skiers and they do their thing and they they post on big ups to them too yeah right they do what they do and they get what they what they get but there's that separation from the there's there's that little bit of separation even more on another level that when you came up like this is what you have to do because you can't just post your own shit and become Mm -hmm. you can't just be very good at social media be a good skier post shit on social media and then people will know you yeah to get where you are when you came up you had to be fucking hot shit you had to stand heads and tails above everything and that meant putting in the work that got you from good to great and it's, which, it's been cool hearing you talk about this because which, it's kind of that it's kind of you dealing with the transition into this new age where yeah that's why you see me post now it's like I'm not gonna lose this <laughs> shit to yeah, people right. that aren't actually out there like right. respecting the craft so right. try and definitely like adapt and like move along with it put in the time but, put in the energy like yeah, mentor and, those kids tell them this is what you gotta do like if you, want, if, you want, if you want if you want if you want to stand above the rest yeah. It's not just about being a good skier and putting a post on Instagram. It's like you got to go that ex- extra mile. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, just for me, I just really like kind of being in the moment and like actually being out in the mountains and like living that lifestyle. And it's then like now for sure, I feel like, I, like sometimes I'll try and post and it's like, fuck. <laughs> I'm just gonna go skiing. Yeah, they're, they're waiting on me. Like, they're waiting on me. Well, that's you know, uh, my friends don't. They don't post, but I'm not trying. To, I and I also see and like respect and like the opportunities that this has brought for other people that wouldn't be able to like, live that life, you know, and absolutely. travel and like. It's 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 like things. I said. It's the different perspectives from people that come from different generations and yeah. different upbringings and different styles. Right, yeah. like mm. there's some Instagram writers that I love watching that I'm like, dude, that is so sick. Yeah. And then there's yeah. some that don't well, post anything, and every once in a while they put something out. I'm like, yeah, there's a new post from this dude, you know? Yeah, yeah. This is the yeah the new norm for right. sure. Right. But right. yeah, but and that's part of why I like coming to Revy. Like when I first showed up here, I was coming from like more of the park world, big baggy clothes, you know. I'm like up <laughs> in Rogers Pass yeah. hiking, Nike outerwear, <laughs> maybe like fifteen. Yeah. 15k not even gore and like on the skin shower cause like chatting up these girls way up and up like we're up a sulking long flat check out and just like skinning out talking to this chick and she's just like 
we're having a good time and then her yeah. friend meets up with us and she's just like you know this slim shady looking character <laughs> and i saw it was like pretty funny to like how like i was like in my world where i'm coming from this is like the style and right, right. Like, i'm like who the fuck is this right and that's funny too because it probably was a bit of culture shock because you came up in that whole world right yeah. you're like i'm the man this is how we nah, do yeah, nah, this I'm is not. how we do and then you come out here and they're like who's this guy yeah and i was just thinking like nah like this is the new style like you're about to see like <laughs> yeah, right. things are yeah. changing but no i was very surprised he's uh, cardio on the hiking is so fast. Is he? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When you tour together, you have to keep up with this guy. Always, I was. I'm behind in the 15 minute. <laughs> oh, for real? They call me the uphill master. No way. Uphill master. I didn't know about that. Low key, low key, low key. Yeah, I'm coming for Greg Hill, dude. He doesn't even know it yet. For we'll real? See. You guys should do. Got, you should do. A long you should do something away. together. You should do something together. Yeah. <laughs> we shock the world, Sam Carlson. No, I just, uh, what is it? Two Mill Hill. Two mil hill. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. But Dudes. no, I love the yeah, I love getting out on the skin track. I, d- I dig yeah. it, man. Dudes, yeah. man. Uh, it, we got another laps. hour and something in here. Shit. All right, let's cut it off. That was fucking awesome. <laughs> you, Sammy. Thank Thanks, you. Boys. boys. Let's let's do it again next time I'm in town. All right. Let's Any, anytime. Hell yeah. Thanks everybody. Thank you. <laughs>